Towers of Doom! Yeah, we get an extra game today, guys, because our half of the bracket was uh, super fast. So we're not in the semi-finals yet, which means that this is still a best of one. We have Towers of Doom as our map. Team Rage Quit against the Hardos. Okay, so Marlo, by the way, on the side of the Hardos, is currently subbing in. So pretty much this is the Wednesday Cup that we're playing, and we're starting at 6 o'clock. Sometimes that means that if one of the players is at work, they are subbing in someone else in the earlier rounds, and that's exactly what's happening here for the Hardos. So Yasu is normally part of the team, and Yasu will play later on for them again, but in the early rounds here, uh, Marlo is subbing in. We've seen this with a couple of other teams too, obviously. So, yeah, it's pretty much just what's happening here. Team Rage Quit, on the other hand, they are in a very interesting position. For them, it would be insane if they can win this one. Because they want to go to the playoffs. And since they've been pretty diligent playing in most of the tournaments here, they are getting rather close to a playoff spot. Especially with the Donuts and also Team Ash not participating in this qualifier. There's a few points up for grabs and you can close that distance. If they would win against the Hardos, I think they would make it into the top 8, at least for the time being. But of course, that's a pretty tall order. The Hardos are just absolutely insane. And yeah. The Hardos are again one of the favorites to make it into the grand final. Now, we already know the next opponent of whoever wins here. The next opponent is going to be the Flipping Mafia, who had a very good showing against Ross Piedol, the Polish team. And. That means that it could be an interesting semi-final. The last time the Hardos were able to win against the Mafia, but that's a game that I could see flip if they got a good day. So we'll see how it plays out. But for now, obviously, we're looking at a best of one here on Towers of Doom. We have Vala still open. So Medif gets banned against Hazu. Better safe than sorry. Vikings are open. I'm not quite sure if the Hardos are going to pick that. I doubt it, to be honest with you. But we have Zagara banned out. Vala still open as an option. Could be played here by Nick Junkrat banned. It's kind of interesting, by the way, that the Hardos ban Junkrat because normally they mostly ban him when they are in a uh, second pick position. But there it is. Malo with Vala as an early pick. Okay. Yeah, what are we getting from the blue team? What are they trying to pull off here? Morena, Srenella, Shakit. I mean, some good players on that setup. And they go for Dehaka and Malfurion. So very early on, they decide on their offlaner. So Dehaka will control the mid lane and the top lane for experience and also then join the fights at the bottom of the map with a quick borrow to ensure that they are getting the numbers advantage. And especially in fights over the pumpkins, that's pretty dangerous for the red team. Then again, if you're having a Vala on the other side, <laughs> that's always very dangerous, especially since that chance we're going to get a double support. Stukov and Garrosh. Yeah, what was the Stukov combo that we had the last time when they played also Suljin? They played Stukov and... I'm blanking. I want to say it was Stukov and Morales that was played once, which was absolutely terrifying with the Suljin, if I remember correctly. And the other team just didn't stand a chance to do anything there. But yeah, so now we got the uh, quick ban on Zarya for exactly that reason. Again, double support is something that floats in your mind whenever Vala is picked on the other side, and there's a couple of things that you want to get rid of. Uh, you can't deny the double support, you can limit the options a bit on the double support, but there's always the threat of a Medivh, which was banned early, or a Zarya, and we've seen that action or that play multiple times now. Tracer gets banned as a bit of a counter pick on the other side. Uh, okay. And, well, let's go. What is the strategy here for the blue team? <laughs> Alright. Oh, by the way, <laughs> I'm seeing it on the overlay here just now. I've been talking about it being in Towers of Doom already a couple of times, but the overlay still says Battlefield of Eternity. Uh, the reason is pretty simple, honestly. I mean, I'm changing it now, but uh, we, we're not supposed to cast this one. I actually jumped in last second, so this is like an extra game that we're getting. But this wasn't supposed to be casted, so I had to jump into the lobby a second before it started. And was happy that I at least got the team names right. But yeah, the map was still wrong there. But anyways, it's changed now and I obviously talked about it earlier too. So we got an Amethyr pick. <laughs> okay, that's one way of going for a pseudo double support. But we also have a Stitches on the other side, which I like. Stitches hook into Malfurion Root and Dehaka Drag with Sylvanas on the Silence. 
potential mind control. Last time that we saw an Abathar pick on this map, what the other team did even instantly is pick, uh, pick Sludge and Hammer and wreck them completely. What's the last pick? What are we getting here? Well, it's Hanzo. Hanzo Silvanas. Oh, no. I would love some Abathar kills with a good dragon arrow. <laughs> and a jump. The Haka moving in, whatever. Either way, the Haka wants the worm, so does everybody else. Towers of Doom is the map. We're heading into the match between Team Rage Quit and the Hardos. Let's go, everybody. Game on! Team Rage Quit against the Hardos. Shizza Kid is playing Stitchers for the blue team. We got Limu on Hanzo, Renelan Malfurion. We got Down for Life on the Haka. Yeah, a little bit of a typo there too. And Morenas on Silvanas. So either way, as yes, we're starting into this, we got our Stitches hook into Malfurion Roots. We have a couple of follow-ups on this one as well, because the Harker can of course come in with the Dragon, provide additional CC, and we got Morenas also with Silvanas, who technically can either go for Mind Control or of course the Silence. Both would be quite nice as a potential follow-up. It's a little bit of a playstyle question that we have here in the first place. On the right side of the map, the Hardos, not the side Hardos, the real deal. We have Hazops on Stukov playing the support here. Again, Yasu is currently not here. He's currently at work, so he will be back soon. Marlo is subbing in, and therefore they're shifting roles a little bit for these early round matches. But Benny is still playing the main tank. He's on Garrosh. We got Nick on Abatha. Heading into the pressurized glance and Hogger played by Copenhagen with the on the prowl on level one. Yeah, now a brawl in the middle of the map is happening. They're gonna try and get the hook in. So far that didn't really work out. The root on Malfurion obviously has to be ready as a follow-up. I bet Benny with the bullying attempts here on Garrosh. But yeah, I'm a bit curious what the stitches combo can pull off. If they can land some of these god hooks that they're gonna need. Obviously on level 13, the extra range is gonna kick in automatically. Blizzard changed some of these baseline quests now. In exactly that fashion. But Benny is gonna die. Yep, that's a hook. And that's a kill. Nicely done. Benny gets isolated and gets murdered. That was a good drag from the Harker before he moved topside to soak the experience against Hogger. Well, that's a nice kill. Established a bit of control at the bottom of the map. Yeah, well done. So by now we have them with a chance to go quickly for their own pumpkin camp. That's obviously the first real point. I mean, I, I guess the first real fight that can break out on this map is in the mid lane if both of the teams commit with a five man to a battle, which doesn't really happen all that often. Normally you just have everybody sitting in the mid lane sniffing each other's butts a little bit and see if they can go for a quick kill, which normally isn't the case. But then again, around the pumpkins the first time the camp spawns that's where you sometimes see an engage by one team that wants to be aggressive yeah they are gonna show that minions boss he really wanted that globe he really wanted that globe he wanted it enough to land the hook and then renella said like, you can stay here and they dropped the mage quickly now the disadvantage in the early game for the hardos is that they don't have a fifth hit point bar in these fights so they have to be a bit careful which kind of engages they take they can still take them but Abyssa needs to be ready with the symbiote and in an ideal world you want to have also the upper hand on numbers so you want to have the side laner still up at the top. A little bit of early game pressure against Team Rage Quit, not really a problem. <laughs> Shizakit Kid is definitely having some fun here. And top side, that could be an issue. <laughs> Alright, Tehaga just got soloed. Copenhagen with a kill, nicely done. Now, I gotta say that I personally think it's a little bit suicidal to go this hard into a 1v1 on a side lane if your opponent has a has an Abath on his team. The Worm can always help out here, but that little play that we just saw there definitely crushed him a bit. Shizakid is also dead. He was obviously helping to save Renella, but the body blocking should... Uh, yeah, the body blocking should be his end. And Renella better make sure that he doesn't die too, because Stitches just took a bullet for him. And that's two kills to one and a leading experience for uh, the Hardos. Yeah, they're going hard on this one. Up at the top, Abatha trying to interrupt, pissing people off a little bit. And the shots are being fired. Obviously, in total, they're taking eight. The salvos are coming in and we have a lead for the red team with 36 to 32 points on the board. Okay, so... 
Mid lane pressure is happening. The level 7 talents are kicking in. The multi shot build continues as you would expect. No real surprises here. Abatha is the only hero in the pool that still holds. Mule has taken it. And they are pressuring Morena's in the middle who's like, guys, I need a bit of help. Like, team! And they're trying. They're trying to rotate in, but Benny slowed them down a bit. The hook, that was short distance anyways, gets followed up by a root regardless. We couldn't really do anything. And for now, it's just level 7 talents kicking in for team rage quit as well. So far they don't have to rage quit. If anybody needs to rage quit, it's the Haka. <laughs> yeah, honestly, if you die on a solo lane the way that he did, then you always hope that the caster just missed it and didn't really look your way. But unfortunately for him, we were absolutely on point with that. And he's just like, yeah, that shouldn't have happened. Mistakes were made. But again, shit happens, and we'll see what he can do as the game continues. Let's not forget that the Haka was also the reason why Benny died earlier. So he landed that drag that they needed. Oh, that's a hook. That's a root. That's good damage. And Copenhagen. Yeah, they can't kill him, but instead it's a turn on Hanzo. He gets dropped. Benny turning it around very, very quickly after all of the attention focuses on Hogger. And that is... Oh, maybe killing on Benny. That was a really nice hook into the tower range. But they keep him alive. No. They keep him alive. And now Stitches is in trouble. <laughs> Vala nearly dead. But she's a kid is making it out. And so does Vala. So, yeah. Another hook. And this time she's gone. Yeah, I'm sorry. But that was just a bit too much. If you're getting murdered twice like this, then you just don't stand a chance. They got the first altar, though. So worst case scenario is that it's a trade in altars. And I think they're going to be very happy with that. It's two kills to three. The problem is really the, uh, the huge lead in experience for the Hardos. They are way ahead here. Interrupt comes a bit too late. So the shots are being fired. It is as small as expected. A one for one trade. And now they are looking for more kills. I mean, look at Copenhagen. He's going deep. Copenhagen is going really deep on this one. Renella dies. And they are hoping for a kill on Stitches. And with a bit of body blocking, they might just be able to pull that one off. Benny is already coming in with a kill. And Anzo is dead. Stitches is dead. Big strafe, baby. Big strafe and nearly a kill against Morenas. Six kills to two. More than a level ahead now. They are crushing. Absolutely crushing. Bot lane is theirs. So that means that they can go to destroy... Yeah, maybe not the bell tower. Well, maybe they can. You can definitely drop it low. The wall is destroyed. Bell Tower will fall to at least 50%. But honestly, with a continuous threat from Bad Benny on Garrosh, you might just be able to take the entire thing. But the Haka came back down to help out. And here comes the copy. The double Stukov. Wait, what? Nick is going for the big slap. He goes for the big slap here. Yeah, he's trying. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I have no idea what exactly Nick was trying to do, but that was a bit of an odd one. So, Hans showed up on that ult. The Desmond being in. Now we got Gorge too. Blue team has taken their own ults. Gorge, Wailing Arrow, Isolation. A single altar on the map. And the problem, by the way, is not only the battle tower at the bottom of the map, it's also the one in the middle. If you look at the mini map, both of them are fairly low. And the mid lane one gets attacked now too from a minion wave, so that makes matters even worse. The situation on the map is not a good one for the Ardos. Oh, short distance arrow too. Yeah, they are struggling here. That's a good hook though. Good hook against Benny. Strafe is being used again. Marlo with the hits. They're trying for Dehaka and he's dead. Dehaka down easily taken and that is real trouble brewing for the blue team because not only will they lose the altar at the bottom of the map it seems like at least one of the bell towers gets converted so at a minimum we have five shots fired that was a very good move from the hardos here and they are pressuring the top lane now too so stukov is he cancelling no hazo continues the channel they're not trying to get they're not getting greedy they're not going for the middle i mean they're doing it now but they took the altar before. Two level lead, talent advantage, virulent reaction kicking in now. And the amount of control over the map that the Hardos have now is a bit scary. Vala, of course, can easily now take the top. Marlo is moving in with the help of Abatha to take the camp. I mean, even Hogga is helping out. Hogga is coming in and yeah, we'll see. They try to go for the bot lane defense here. 
Morena's already has to jump back, but he's of course a bit of a linchpin. Nice, okay. Can they go for the kill? I don't think so. That was the copy of Nick. That was actually kind of nice. Nick is yoloing them out a bit, but it's working. And of course it allows them also to be way more aggressive. Uh, they're losing the control over the bell tower at the bottom of the map, but they're getting the one up at the top instead. And they're also going for the Haka. The arrow connects from Hanzo, and that might just save the day for the Haka. Marlo with another strafe. Big hits coming, but it is Stukov that dies. Hazops is down. They're trying to at least get a counter kill, which so far hasn't worked. Uh, we got a shockwave also coming through. And bad position for the red team. They lose Hogger. And that is two kills now for Team Rage Quit. So they have an altar coming up. Maybe a chance to take a bell tower too. Mid lane is still under some pressure. Top lane, of course, has been taken previously. But at the bottom of the map, defending this one is going to be more than a challenge. Because that's a full four man that's pushing in now. Mule is getting dropped, but with the help of Sivanas, I mean, how are you defending this one? And the answer is, well, you don't. At the same time, they are attempting to go for the Haka. That's not quite working out for them. But they're going for the boss. They're trying to trade for this. And that should work out because the channel is still happening down here. But there's a few pumpkins on the board too. We have four shots fired. 23 against 24 points. And since the boss will be claimed by the Hardos, they can at least reciprocate and take another four down of the blue team's core. So they're going to drop it to 19. Whereas down here, it's all a question of whether or not those pumpkins are making it through. And they shouldn't. They really shouldn't. With the defense being in position, the Hardos should have enough to take them on down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy. Easily. They need to rotate, and that exposes the top bell tower a little bit so the Harker can start to do some damage and attempt to reclaim it. But down here, this isn't really happening. 38,000 damage output from Vala. We got 20k on Sylvanas. Uh, the Haka is playing it very safe topside. Problem is not only Abertha, but also that there could always be a rotation and someone coming in to take that down. The talent lead is now here for the Hardos, and they're going to attempt to exploit that as best they can to retake the bell tower at the bottom of the map. But the gap is small, and that's a really nice hook. I mean, damn, son. Oh, boy. Shizaki just channeled his inner JPL and murdered that one. Good gorge as well. It isolates bad Benny, and that's another kill. They get two kills, and they might get three. They're getting three. Uh, team? Team Rage Squid just stepped it up big time. What the hell? And that's right before a triple altar phase. Guys, this changes everything. The Haka now moving topside. And, yeah. This one, Vala dies first. Then they get the kill against Bad Benny. And Hogga just is not in a good spot here. So Hogga dies too. And that's in total three kills that they got there. That is insane. They're going to try and take every single bell tower. Nick is even committing to the copy because they're at least they're attempting to at least save this one. Nick gets immediately hooked. The copy gets blown down. But there's two heroes that are still up. Four shots get fired. Sylvanas is attempting to retake so that they can take a bit more. Yep, there's the interrupt. They're buying as much time as they can. It was not really a good position. The hook, of course, comes out. But they will give this one up. So it's two altars out of the three that they're getting. And it's at least five shots fired with this one, which at least for a few seconds, puts them off even points on the core. Because Hazops is now channeling too. And Vala is attacking Hanzo. Now, there is still an advantage, obviously, on core points for the Hardos. 16 against 19. They get three shots fired here. But the bell tower control is in the hands of Team Rage Quit. And this is something that the Hardos are now attempting to change at the top lane. But this is, a this is all of a sudden a really interesting game. The Hardos were in control for a long time, but the last couple of fights that we saw were fantastic for Team Rage Quit. With good hooks on Stitches and the follow-ups that we've seen from Renella here, that's kind of crazy. So yeah, we'll see what they can do with it. For now, the bot lane is where we have to, of course, pay at least some attention to. Arrow against Vala. Wailing Arrow comes out. They go for the isolation. Oh, and there's the kill. One kill is in against Vala. Now they try to go for Bad Benny. And Bad Benny turns into Dead Benny. Very quick transition here on this. He's a, he, uh, he identifies now as a dead person. Hazorbs. He gets saved by Abyssa, but this just continues the trend that we've already seen over the last couple of seconds. And it's pumpkin time, baby. It is pumpkin time. That's three that connect. Yep, all three shots are fired. 16 to 16 points, and things are getting noticeably worse for the red team. 
Look at this one. The isolation of Vala, the quick kill, the gorge. Benny put into a real bad position. Gets body blocked too, and then it's the end of him. And there gets another, another bell tower controlled by the blue team, who now has a one level lead. One level lead. Guys, the Hardos might lose this one. This is a best of one. This is a best of one. And the Hardos are in trouble. At least for the foreseeable future. Even a single altar would put five points off the opponent's score. Now, we're still, of course, in a setup where both teams have 16 points. So that's a fair amount. But that this is dangerous. This is really, really dangerous. Five shots fired against three. Now it's 13 against 11 points that we're seeing here. And level 20 is looming on the horizon for Team Rage Quit. Another arrow. That one gets dodged out easily. Nicely done. Still some attempts to go for the bell tower. And they're going to claim this one. So the goal of the blue team has to be... First of all, to land a hook and get a kill. But also, they want to get another three of the pumpkins through. And that should be possible. If they burn the minion wave down quickly, they should be able to do that. Yeah, pumpkins are coming in. I would have probably saved that hook a little bit. Yeah, now they're losing out on it. I mean, pretty much the red team is currently capitalizing on the fact that they know that the hook is on cooldown. So they knew that there was no real threat that they could move in to take those pumpkins down. So a bit of a misplay from Team Rage Quit. If the hook, of course, lands the initial one from Stitches and they get a kill out of it, then it's fantastic. But the way that they played it out, they could have likely gotten two, three points off the opponent's score, and I think that would have been worth it. They have half a level, and that is the big advantage for the Hardos now, that the gap is not that big anymore. They give up the boss, they know that it's going to be taken, but they don't want to engage into a fight against the level 20 talent advantage. Level 20, by the way, with the Master Hooker. They get the four points fired, and it's full-on control change on the Bell Towers again. So down at the bottom of the map, this one gets taken. Up at the top, we have another one claimed. And the Hardos are down to the single digits now, thanks to the four shots that just got fired from the core. So, uh, from the boss. So 13 to 7. Now, this is still very much winnable for the Hardos. Don't count them out. We are in the late game, and late game is a very, very different ball game. But if another good hook lands, then this is doable for Team Rage Quit. And that would be a massive step towards a playoff position for the team. Deadly Calm is in on the level 20. Hogger with a power spike. And now it's channel time. Yeah. This is a problem. The Haka couldn't take it. So now the advantage on the bell tower control for the Hardos. That was really important for them. Even if they lose the bell tower, it's only three points. If they take it, they close the gap quickly. And that's what they're hoping for. Hazorps. Yeah, he gets the channel. Nicely done. Well done. That's five points off the core. Now we're talking eight to seven. Yeah, it's just going down to the wire, baby. This is really going down to the wire here. So, we'll see if they can win another fight, because that's at the end of the day what the blue team has to do now. They have to find another opening and get some kills in, the way that they did it previously with a decent hook and a follow-up. And from the Hardos point of view, what you need to focus on right now is positioning. You need to make sure that you're well positioned, that there's no problem, that you're not getting hit by that hook. Anticipate a little bit where Stitches is, how he plays this one out. And then again, here comes the play. Hands over the arrow! And they fucked up. That's the kill against Malfurion. Stitches is dying too. He went for the gorge. And Team Rage Quit might just have lost their chance to take down the Hardos. They were really close. But that's two down. A third one about to fall. Sylvanas is doing her best to at least retake the mid lane. And that's probably the only thing that they can do now. But boy, did they just shit the bed. Yeah, that was tricky. Now, Hazops and his boys are going to get the bottom bell tower control, so that's nice. They're talking about 30 to 45 seconds now. Top lane pressure with Abatha is also happening, and it's a double... Yeah, guys, it's a double altar now. Double altar and 24. This is looking very much like game. Now, the good thing is that once the Haka is back, he should be able to use his global to move straight into the fight. But this is still real trouble. Bottom control has been established. Top lane is getting pressured. They are losing a lot here. Yeah. Blue team, they didn't really expect that. The flank that came in from the Hardos was just a bit too powerful. And now they could lose the game right here. Marlow with a the channel. They need to interrupt this. They need to interrupt and not like this. Nope, that's game. That's game. 
The Hardos, they were in danger of losing this one and being out of the tournament. There was a real chance for Team Rage Quit to make it happen. But Marlo finishes the final channel and that is game as the Hardos move on to the semifinal to face off against the Flipping Mafia in a best of three. GG and well played.